الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد Fasting has many, many spiritual benefits for the believer. And by fasting, the believer has a chance to remove some of the harshness, some of the hypocrisy, and the inclination to cheat and deceive and st sternness and shudda and other things that might pollute the heart and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with hearts that are open and that benefit during this holy month and after the holy month that we can benefit and have clean hearts. Because that's what one of the things Ramadan does for us. And that is an attribute or a part of taqwa. Because as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ladina min qablikum la'alakum tatakun. Fasting was prescribed for you similar to the way it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you would have taqwa, that you would have God-fearfulness, you would be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enjoining His commands, avoiding what He has prohibited. And having that taqwa, that's related to the heart and the limbs, just as iman is a part of our heart is contained in our heart and it's contained on our limbs and meaning our actions and it is contained in our speech and giving ourselves that opportunity during the month of Ramadan we're given that opportunity but the way in which we give ourselves that opportunity is by doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed and following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by reading the Qur'an as much as possible learning some things beneficial for us in Islam as much as possible remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the easiest thing to do on your tongue as much as possible by having your intention pure and constantly keeping the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your tongue and avoiding speaking and looking at and touching those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited all of those things will help you their manifestations of taqwa meaning they're a part of taqwa and they will help you attain taqwa by practicing and exercising that عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم صوم شهر الصبر وثلاث أيام من كل شهر يذهبن وهر الصدر رواه بزار وغير والمنظر في ترغيب وترهيب. In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم said, fasting the month of patience and the three days during every month. will remove those wicked things that are contained in our chest, meaning our heart. 
meaning the things as the ulama explain things like anger hypocrisy negative jealousy harshness and all the other types of filth which pollutes a person's heart so by fasting as the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned he, he referred to Ramadan there as the Shahar al-Sabr the month of patience letting us know that it requires the various forms of patience during the holy month of Ramadan patience to avoid the haram patience on enjoining the good and forbidding the evil patience in doing what we have been commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that requires patience for example the one who is tested with alcoholism and those addictions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best are very difficult to overcome but the one who is tested with that and other drug abuse if they have a reasonable amount of control where they can strive during that holy month of Ramadan and they restrict themselves from from that that evil sin that requires patience that's an exercise of patience Shahar al-Sabr the, the month of patience and the one who is tested with zina which I do not believe is the same type of addiction although some people may find themselves addicted to those to their shahwat like that but probably not to where there's a physical same kind of response as drug certain types of drug and alcohol abuse but it requires sabr to restrain oneself from that and the one who's tested with looking at the Muharram who watches the opposite sex as they uh, are in the marketplace in the mall or what have you or that they look at the Muharram on television that which is uh, prohibited or on the internet such as pornography and so forth The holy month of Ramadan is a chance to exercise patience and restrain oneself from that, as they should restrain themselves always from that. But the month of Ramadan is the Shahr al-Sabr, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. So during that time, it requires extra striving by an individual tested with those sins to do everything possible to avoid it. And due to that great blessing from Allah, that test, we're tested and, and we are to be patient during that. Perhaps Allah will bless you to gain the momentum to leave those sins forever. That's, that's what's, uh, what's required, but also that's what's encouraged. Because what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? In order that you will be patient, in order that you will, uh, in order that you will gain taqwa. So, in order that you will gain that momentum to avoid the muharramat, those things which are prohibited from your desires, your shahwat, or perhaps even the shubahat, even bid'a, that a person may involve themselves in the difficulty with bid'ah with religious innovation is that the person who engages in it usually is unaware unlike the sinner you know that drinking alcohol is haram you know that eating foods that are not halal or not from ahl kitab are haram the meats you know that watching those things which are prohibited is haram. It's impermissible. 
and it's sinful. But when you involve yourself in certain activities, which are not legislated by the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, nor from the madhab or the menhaj, the methodology of the salaf of this ummah, then that is also prohibited. However, أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Most of them don't know. And this is why the ulama, the ulama of the salaf, used to regard religious bid'a, innovation, as more harmful than sinfulness. Due to the fact that with sinfulness, you're aware of it and you can remove it. You know you're committing zina. You know you're watching pornography. You know you're drinking, you're smoking weed. You know you are using crack or snorting coke. You're aware that that's a sin. And you, perhaps, depending on the, how your heart is, you feel sorrow for that. But when you're doing something and you believe you're coming closer to Allah, but in fact it's a bid'ah. It's not from the, the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or it was not commanded or legislated in the way in which you're doing it. You believe you're coming closer to Allah when in fact you're coming further from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Even though your intention is pure. But your action is not pure because it's not in accordance with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, exercising that patience and avoiding those things during the holy month of Ramadan and after Ramadan, trying to attain that momentum is what we are ordered to do as Muslims and what we should strive to do. And trying to fast the sunnah days, the three days during the, uh, during the regular months. I am a bayda. And Mondays and Thursdays. All, also, these are ways to gain forgiveness from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are ways to exercise patience and ways to clean the heart. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.